New Zealand Trade and Enterprise um, here in Auckland, uh, working with early stage Māori exporting companies across, across the country. Um, I'm going to talk to you today about the work that um, we're doing in conjunction with, um, with Callaghan Innovations um, and some private sector Māori tech entrepreneurs in, in building an integrated Māori tech ecosystem um, and some of the activities that we've been undertaking over the past uh, six and twelve months to get to the point where we're about to uh, to launch um, the Tiritoi Whakangao um, as a standalone non-profit to really drive Māori um, innovation in the technology sector. So firstly I'll start off with a little bit about NZTE and what we do um, and how we work with companies. So we've got our mission statement up there. So we're all about helping companies go to the world, uh, helping companies export. Um, and of course, when we're talking around technology, um, if you are a technology company, generally you can be an, an international company from day one. Um, it's, a lot of, it's a different growth track to our traditional industries, our primary industries, our food and beverage industry. Um, and so it requires a different approach um, from, from NZT and from the government to, to support these uh, these companies that are growing and growing quite quickly and it's been um, at the forefront of our minds over the past few years at NZT as, as to how we support uh, firstly uh, innovation and technology companies to take those, uh, take those new developments to the world um, but then also how do we do it in the, in the Māori space. And we do this through two ways, so we help companies um, exporting goods and services but we also help on the investment side, uh, bringing money into companies uh, and also helping companies understand the investment readiness uh, journey and what it looks like to, to get your company set up for, for investment. And within New Zealand Trade and Enterprise, we have Te Pura Māori, uh, our Māori business unit. Uh, there is about, I think at last count, nine or ten of us who are in Māori facing roles and that we work directly with Māori companies um, on the investment and the, uh, the trade side. Um, and through this, alongside some leading Māori tech entrepreneurs, we've created a strategic approach to growing the Māori um, tech ecosystem throughout, throughout New Zealand. But first, I guess, a bit of problem definition. So what are we actually trying to solve for here? Um, and, and some of these things you're, you're probably uh, are quite well aware of. Um, so of course, we've got Māori economy is quite large. I think later, latest figures are around about $50 billion. But what does that actually mean and, and where is that, in, that money invested in? Um, it is quite highly concentrated in the primary industry. Uh, forestry, farming, sheep, beef, um, and a trend over the last few years, honey, um, is, is coming through quite strongly. Uh, so there is a need, to, oh, sorry, and now our, um, our fishing industries. So there is a clear need to diversify. Um, especially when you're starting to see all these emerging trends come through, which has the potential to quite radically disrupt these primary and these food and beverage industries. Uh, we're seeing um, things such as synthetic milk, synthetic meats. Uh, in New Zealand, the, uh, the kerfuffle last week around, around that, you know, this is not a one-off. These are trends that are, that are happening and are coming. Um, and so our dairy industry, our forestry industry, our oil industry, our energy industry are all up for disruption from technology, from innovation, from um, more environmentally sustainable ways of, of um, providing similar type of resources uh, for us. The second key driver here is that Māori aren't really involved in the tech game. We're not. I mean, there's, there's a handful of Māori tech companies um, floating around, but we, we're not engaged in it. Um, we, we don't have a lot of young Māori who are coming through into, um, into technology, who are coming through into, into the large companies um, it, who, are, who are driving this. Um, it's our third largest exporting industry uh, and we're not involved. Um, lots of Māori in dairy and primary production, lots of Māori in tourism, no, very few in the tech space. So we need to solve for that. At the same time, the ecosystem is, is, is disconnected. Uh, you've got a whole plethora of, of accelerators, of incubators, of programs. Um, I think just in the Māori space, you've got Dig My Idea, you've had Kōkiri, which has gone through. Um, you've got the work that we've been doing. You've got uh, regional um, hubs all around the country who are doing various programs and startup weekends and business schools and, and, and all of these activities. Um, but there's no clear connection through that pipeline for a company. Um, so I talked to some of the early stage tech companies that I'm working with and, and they don't know where to go to next. 
they're quite lucky that they've come into our door um, because they wouldn't have known to come to us if someone hadn't said come and talk to NZTE. And, and that's the reality for a lot of um, early stage tech companies. They don't know where to go, they don't know what the ecosystem looks like and, and there's no one really driving them through that whole process. <coughs> And that's similar on the, uh, at the regional level, where our regional economies are quite disconnected sometimes from the economic growth uh, engines that are coming through. We think tech, we think Wellington, right? We think the work that Zero have done to build up an ecosystem, and Auckland as well. But there's a lot of potential in, in, in the regions, uh, and so our first initiative was actually over in Gisborne, in the Tairawhiti. Um, and we took eight Māori exporting companies um, and did a hackathon over in Gisborne for 48 hours in, in May. We pulled together around about 100, 150 um, developers, um, business analysts and investors from, from these eight organisations from within NZTE um, and then from within uh, Datacom, Microsoft um, and there was a third one who came along, Amazon. So we had them all in the room um, and out of that um, created a lot of benefits for those export companies but also for Gisborne as a whole. So we drove, uh, through that weekend, four new Māori owned companies were created. Um, there were eight products, um, eight new innovations that came out of that weekend. Four of those are, in, are moving into the commercialisation phase. Three companies decided to move um, between 40 and 50 of their development staff from Auckland down to Gisborne. Um, and now in, that, in negotiations now with the Gisborne Council as to what that looks like and how they can support it and where is the office space and, uh, for these people to come in. Uh, because we took them down there and they, um, if you've been to Gisborne and you know that, that wonderful uh, beach, uh, we're at the surf club looking out over there and, and everyone was just sitting there thinking just how amazing is this lifestyle. Um, and, and loved it and could, felt a really, um, really connected vibe to, to the whole experience and wanted to relocate and, and saw the buy-in uh, coming from the council um, and from government agencies to support that. Um, and I think that's the potential when we get people in the room and we, we show them the possibility. Um, of the companies there, not all of them were tech companies either. Um, the, old, the, end, uh, the, old, the winner um, of that hackathon was Ngati Pro Seafoods. Um, and the group that came together designed a um, essentially an integrated um, blockchain application which tracks the fish from source to plate using VR um, technology throughout that whole journey. So a consumer can, and, and workable technology, in 48 hours they created the videos. They connected that to QR codes. Um, they mapped it out and created an app. So they passed around during their pitch. Um, a, uh, I think it was a piece of salmon or some, some uh, cut of fish from their products. You could scan the QR code on your phone and, and you had videos where you could see part of that journey. Um, and they did that in 48 hours and so that's some of the potential there. Um, so we have some very clear advantages um, in this space. It's our culture and our shared values which are highly sought after and it, it provides that unique, authentic proposition to international markets. We had half a dozen people over from Silicon Valley um, to join us as mentors and, um, and coders and developers as part of, that, uh, part of that hackathon. And they were blown away by the experience because it was like nothing they'd ever seen before. Um, seven o'clock at night, a couple of people pulled out the guitars, like you do when you're back in the garage and you're, 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 you know, you're with your whanau. Um, and they were strumming away and, and you had the, um, the karaoke going and they just couldn't believe it. It was so relaxed, it was so formal, but they felt so connected to the people. Um, they hadn't experienced anything like that in the valley because it's all, it's all go, go, go there. Um, so coming down to New Zealand, they, they really felt that what's missing in those big tech companies and those big tech hubs is that connection to community and place and they found that here in New Zealand. And that's a powerful story which we can, we can take to the world. And we're a young population. Our average age is what, 23, 24, somewhere around that, um, which is unique across the world. And so we've got a huge pool of young people coming through who've grown up with technology, who've grown up with cell phones, with um, iPads, with computers, and, and know intuitively how this, all, of this, all of these systems work. And so the system isn't working. Um, like I said, the lack of connectivity. Access to capital is a big one. Uh, so for us, it was about getting the investors in the room. Um, because when you bring the investors along in the journey, and especially when we're talking uh, Māori organisations, iwi uh, land trusts, who are generally quite conservative and, and are reluctant to, to invest in the, uh, I guess, the more higher risk 
um, elements of, of, our, of the economy. Getting them in the room, showing them the potential and the possibility of the stuff, uh, it was a very, very powerful um, initiative. And that's flowing through into a, another, the next step of what we're looking to do, which is in November. We're taking 40 Māori um, tech companies and I think around about nine iwi investors up to Ireland for two weeks to explore the opportunities of doing business with the European Union. Um, so it's getting capital along with that journey so that, they, so that you're connected, we're connecting the capital with the investors and the ideas from day one. So I have five minutes, so um, this is kind of the future. So it's all about a generational change. And what's been driving this is, is how do we help the next generation and how do we provide a really good platform for the next and the subsequent generations coming through. Um, and this is how we're building the system. With our explorers, with our navigators, and our cultivators. So our explorers are our entrepreneurs, the people who, and our young people who want to go out there and, and change the world, and it's providing a pathway for them to do that. Our navigators, that's, that's the ecosystem. That is um, the overarching organisation, which is you know, T3W, to drive companies, to drive our explorers through the pathway so that they understand through the entire length of their journey in, in starting a business and in in, in innovating, creating a tech company, where they go to next and who they need to be talking to at each stage of that journey and linking them in to investors uh, from day one so that they can build those relationships so when the time comes when they need that money, we've got that money there. And our cultivators. Uh, and this is the great thing about this, um, this initiative is that there is about 15, 10 or 15 um, very experienced Māori tech entrepreneurs who have signed up for this, um, who are on the board um, of, uh, of um, T3W, who are who, are, who come along to, these, to the hackathons, who, who will come along to Ireland, who will act as mentors to the new companies coming through, to share their knowledge, to share their experience, to share their culture, um, and to provide um, that experience and that knowledge to the next generation. So our explorers, these are our, um, our entrepreneurs, our innovators, our navigators, and our cultivators. And so this is the model. Um, and working through each stage, we've kind of mapped out what are the most important elements of each. So starting with our explorers, so how do we create, um, and to use the crude terminology, how do we create that pipeline so that we get a lot of people coming in at the start, so that we're creating, uh, and the vision is another 50 to 100 Māori tech companies in the next five years that we want to create through this program. And it starts with getting scholarships out there. It starts with sending 50 kids up to, um, up to UC Berkeley so they can go through the entrepreneurship training. It's about running events, things like Hack Tide Afiti, um, moving into next May where we want, we're running uh, the next Hack Tide Afiti, which is with a space theme. Um, and Peter Beck and Rocket Lab and Ian Taylor, animation researchers, research, have both signed up to, um, to help us drive that, that forward. And then right through into business competitions, think young enterprise schemes, um, things like Dig My Idea, supporting that ecosystem and, and really driving that into the next stage, which is where our, our navigators come in. The people who can drive them through the next stages from, from concept, startup, early stage and growth. And our cultivators. So it's actually creating a Māori angel network. It's creating a Māori venture capital network. It's bringing iwi along to the table and saying, it's great that you've created this $100 million fund for, um, for private equity investment for companies at this stage, right? But we want, where is our $100 million fund to invest in companies at this stage? Um, and some of you, we are starting to see that. They're coming along, they're seeing the potential, and they're buying into this model. Um, because if we don't have all of these connected, then um, it's just going to be the same old story um, of companies trying to do their own thing without much support, without much assistance, and, and without any idea as to where to go to next. Uh, and so like I said, so it's all about building this pipeline right the way down through, uh, through the journey with the aim creating 100 international tech companies over the next 5 to 10 years. And I think this quote from Matthias is a good way to, to finish up. It's our values, our relationships, our respect, our reciprocity, our stewardship and our spirituality. It provides a platform for Māori to succeed in, in the modern technology world. And this is something that I'm noticing quite a lot through the work that I'm doing at, at New Zealand Trade and Enterprises, that we think that New Zealand is unique on the world stage when it comes to our products and, and what we have to offer. The reality is it isn't. 
there's a, hun there's, there's a dozen different countries who can share the same images that we're sharing about our environment, our, our mountains, our rivers, our, 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 uh, yeah, our farmlands. You think Sweden, you think Chile, you think Switzerland, you think Iceland, you think Norway, Chile. All of these countries can tell the same stories. What sets us apart, what makes us unique um, is our Māori tongue, is us as Māori, uh, is the stories and the connection that we have to our whenua, our spirituality, our connections, um, and our framework of doing business. I think that's my time, so <laughs> any questions? <laughs> Uh, conversations, conversations around innovation today, and it's a space that I've been playing in for the last twenty something years. But I think um, it's important to articulate the aspect of innovation. You had it on this close to one of your last slides was that that that, that the funnel or the pipeline mm. for innovation, and getting people to actually understand the risk of innovation, and, we, and that fact that what we mean there is we've got all this starting at the top, but only f a few will succeed. And I think that's where governments sometimes struggle, and that's one of the things I've been have been trying to communicate with government. Government is the aspect of risk, because not everything will su succeed. In fact, most businesses fail, mm. most innovation fails, and there's nothing wrong with failure, because that's when you are working on the edge, and that's what innovation actually is. But I think we haven't really scoped that or talked about that 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 that, that aspect of risk and the f and and at that cutting edge, there's a lot of failure, mm. but there's nothing wrong with that, and I think we need to be, be clear about that. Yeah, no, it's, it's a very good point. And one thing we encourage um, the young entrepreneurs we work with is that, yeah, if you fail, try again and try again and try again because, and, and just keep going. And, and you're right about the pipeline because, I mean, the ultimate aim is, yes, you create a $100 million company here. Well, then what, what happens to the rest of it? Oh, I shouldn't have yeah. the screen. Um, yeah, and I, I used to work with Peter yeah. Beck at, at Rocket Lab. Oh, uh, nice. before, sorry, about industrial yeah. research back 20 years ago, and he was talking about Rocket C, and everyone just thought he was nuts. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> and he kept trying. <laughs> yeah, kia ora. So what specific skills you're looking to develop in the youths to become that entrepreneurs? What, so the specific skills? Um, yep. So I think anything really, it's the entrepreneurial set, skill set. It's someone who, actually, who goes out there and, um, and challenges the status quo. So it's someone who looks at something and asks, is there a better way of doing this? And then goes out and finds that better way. So you're not specifying like business or IT or something like no, that? No, no, because it, you, it can quite, quite you, 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 we need people of all stripes, right? And, and, and I've worked in a tech company, I've run a tech company, and you, you need your developers, you need your marketers, you need your salespeople, you need your finance people, uh, you need everyone, um, and you need a wide range of skills to run these companies. And how in each region you have approached to get their support? You know, each Within region. the regions? Yep. Yeah, so we're going region by region. Uh, we're talking to the economic development agencies. We're talking to uh, local councils. We're talking to the, um, the regional economic development um, entities that are set up to drive their plans um, and are working with them. So this is not, um, I guess, something that's been imposed on regions. This is working with regions and, and working with what they've already got and then building the ecosystem around that. So any plan with the Taranaki region? Have you done something in the Taranaki region? Oh, look, Taranaki, Taranaki is close to my heart. Uh, okay. I am, uh, yeah, I am a, um, my family is from Waitara, uh, Te Atiawa, uh, Taranaki Iwi. So I am very keen to, to see um, this come to Taranaki. I am, have been talking to Venture Taranaki. I have been talking to some Iwi down there. You will appreciate this, that Taranaki is a little bit further behind a lot of the rest of the country in terms of where our Iwi at and in terms of their phase of development. Um, but yeah, it's it's um, something I'd love to do. So we've got time for one, one, maybe one more question. Thank you, mate. That's really interesting. Just just one question for me. Um, it's how wh how do you think what would be the best way to to motivate more of of younger Māori to engage in in, in these sort of concepts? Because I mean, obviously. You know the, the, that uniqueness is a huge advantage, mm. but you know we see it quite a lot. You know, 
but the engagement is low? Yeah, hmm. uh, no, that's, that's a really good question. And we, we talk about this quite a bit, is how do we engage and how do we bring people along? Because it's, it's no point just you know, focusing on the 10 tech companies that we're working with now, it's how do we create that next generation of them? Um, I think there's two things, and the first one is around the conversations that we have, and it's conversations that those of us in the space, um, and, and also um, our political leaders are having. Um, we're still hearing, I guess, a lot of talk around primary industry. Um, and, and so we need to change that conversation, um, and we're working on changing that conversation. But then we need to bring uh, our tamariki along, we need to bring the young people along with us. Um, and so one of the ideas we're kind of floating around next year's uh, hackathon um, is actually turning it into, a, into an event. Into, uh, and this came from um, Sarah Reo over in uh, Heretonga, who kind of gave this idea, was, uh, why don't you create this the uh, matatini of, of tech entrepreneurship? Um, and make it a regional activity. So get the regions excited. So, so like I say, go to Taranaki and see what's happening in there and, and see if there are Māori tech companies who want to contribute to these challenges and then bring everyone together in one place and, and get them to bring their whānau along and do it in a stadium atmosphere where you can do the pictures, where you can share this innovation um, and you can show people the, um, what like the yeah. excitement looks like. Like a 24-hour film, you know, the <laughs> film challenge. That yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's about, yeah, it's the conversations we have and, and it's really making the effort to bring them along with us and to engage with them. Thank you. Hey, Craig, what a terrific uh, conjunction of talks. So I want Anissa and um, next to each other at dinner tonight. Let's put our hands together for... Uh,